everyone and welcome to my favourite 25 books before I turn 25 video. So the day I upload this is going to be the day before my 25th birthday and I know this face says about 16 but I swear I'm actually going to be turning 25. So what I thought I'd do to celebrate is to share with you 25 of my favourite books that I've read throughout my lifetime. So let's get into it. First of all I'm just going to quickly say this is not going to be in any particular order whatsoever. This is just whatever I pulled off my shelves at whatever moment. First book I'm going to mention is McFly Unsaid Things. Now this one is their autobiography and I'm just going to put it out here. I do not usually read autobiographies. Non-fiction is not my thing whatsoever and autobiographies are definitely not my thing. But I am a McFly fan. When I say I'm a McFly fan, I mean I am an obsessive McFly fan. I am a huge Galaxy defender and have been since I was about 12 years old. And so that's like 13 years now. I've seen them multiple times. All of my necklaces, apart from one, is a McFly necklace. 90% of the um, bracelets on my wrists is all from their various tools and stuff like this. Half my wardrobe is McFly t-shirts. When in my old filming location, you can see my McFly shelf, which was just filled with McFly books. And also my posters on my wall are 90% McFly and part from like three I think it is so about three of them aren't McFly and the rest of them are so I'm a massive McFly fan and I have been like I said since I was about 13 so naturally I love their autobiography because it was so insightful into how they became a band all of the struggles they've been through as a band up to 2013 which was their 10 year anniversary and it just was so so informative it made me laugh it made me cry it was absolutely brilliant and gave me such a even deeper appreciation for them as a band and and as people as well while reading this one I will say though it does come with trigger warnings for a suicide attempt which is described in quite a lot of detail depression rehab um, drug addiction alcoholism there's also bipolar disorder that didn't go di uh, didn't get diagnosed for a very very long time eating disorders not otherwise specified um, anxiety and OCD there's a lot in here that's quite deep and quite dark so please be warned going into this one but overall though I do find it to be a beautiful book inside and out and also I've just got to mention in terms of the outside the front cover is lovely the back cover is lovely the end papers if I can get open I can't get it open there we go are also lovely the front cover is lovely and the back cover is also absolutely lovely and I just absolutely adore this book essentially I even did a bit of psychology work on it because of all the psychology stuff in here when I was studying psychology and also it's got concert tickets in here from the anthology tour 2016 these are my spare ones I've got everything else on my door over there so <laughs> I've still got concert tickets spare inside the book but essentially yes one of my favourite books of all time. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. On the McFly note, I'm also going to mention The Christmasaurus because I wouldn't be me if I did not mention one of Tom's books. Now, this one is specifically very, very important to me because, one, it was Tom's first middle grade that he wrote solo and it's a first full-length novel. Also, this happened because that was incredible. Tom is my favourite member of the band, so getting that re uh, retweet was absolutely incredible to me and I'm just never going to be over it, essentially. I'm never going to be over this, but it was just genuinely an incredible moment. I do genuinely love this book. I love the musical edition as well that comes with a CD filled with a whole load of songs that Tom wrote to do with this story as well. They are absolutely brilliant. It's a bit childish but I absolutely love that and it is just a brilliant book. The illustrations are brilliant. The front cover is absolutely brilliant. The end papers are also really nice and so is it under the dust jacket as well with the shiny Christmas or underneath. So essentially, yeah, I just absolutely love this book and there is not concert tickets in this one, but I do genuinely love it. I do genuinely love this book. Now, Legendborn I read at the beginning of this year and absolutely fell in love with it because this is an Arthurian retelling by way of Shadowhunters and it was fantastic. Fantastic. I was very worried about it going in because I had heard some mixed reviews about it but I absolutely fell in love with the characters. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The world building and everything was fantastic. The plot twist got me and I cannot wait for the sequel because this was brilliant. I've also got to mention Skulldarkery Pleasant because I wouldn't be me if I did not mention Skulldarkery Pleasant but I have genuinely loved this series since I was about 11 years old. I keep on saying 9 but it turns out when I actually look at the publish date on this I... It wasn't published when I was nine, but I was about 11 when this was published, so it was around the age of 11 when I started reading this series, and I 
still adore it to this day. I'm actually co-hosting a read-along for this series and you've actually got time to catch up with it as well because we're only on book two at the moment and our live show for book two, Playing With Fire, is going to be at the beginning of April, beginning to mid-April anyway, so you've definitely got time to read the first two books before our second live show. But anyway, enough with the advertising. I do genuinely love this series. I love that it's filled with pop culture references. I love the world building of it. I love the characters. I literally grew up wanting to be Valkyrie and dressing up as Valkyrie for like a world book day thing so I wish I had photos of that and I wish I still had that trench coat but I do genuinely like wish I had photos of that because I looked really cool but I do genuinely love this book and also this one I actually took to Yauk with me in 2019 and got it signed by Derek Landy himself which was amazing but genuinely I love the humour of this, I love the world building, I love the characters, I love the storyline, plot twists are incredible, the pop culture references are on point and it's just one of the main reasons why I love now characters who are women with swords and also pop culture references and sarky characters. It's because of this book. Another obvious one has to be Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Now I only got into this book a couple of years ago because the TV show was coming out and I basically heard the words David Tennant playing a demon called Crowley and went yes this is for me. That's in, I'm in. <laughs> Essentially, I'm basically in for anything David Tennant's in, but for him to be in a Terry Pratchett production with Michael Sheen as well, and so many of my other favourite actors as well, I was immediately on board. I read this and I fell in love with it. It's absolutely madcap, weird, and it's over the top, it's ridiculous, and I love it. I cannot help but love this book. It's just fantastic. I love the adaption of it as well. It's just one of my favourite things of all time and I mean I love it so much I even have the script book as well for the TV show and also behind this the TV companion as well and they are my prides and joys quite frankly I just everything to do with this book and the TV show I adore it I can't help it but I am absolutely in love with it switching hands now because quite frankly this hand hurts but we're going on to now a blade so black now this one changed my mind about Alice in Wonderland retailings and just Alice in Wonderland Maybe not Alice in Wonderland in general, I still hate it, but essentially I had to study the original Alice in Wonderland when I was about 16, 17 for my A-levels and I hated every single moment of it. Quite frankly, I absolutely despised Alice in Wonderland, mainly because Alice to me was rather like nonsensical, illogical, she kept on crying and all the rest of it and I know she's a child and it's supposed to be in that kind of story writing fast type thing, I don't know, but essentially I hated its guts, essentially, and I left every single English lesson moaning about how much I hated it, and I basically swore to never read any Alice in Wonderland retelling, but I changed my mind for a Blade So Black because someone said it was basically sort of like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of thing, and I absolutely fell in love with this book. I absolutely love anything like women with swords again women with swords is one of my favorite character tropes ever and seeing it in here along with all the pop culture references as well as like the references to the original book and how it was all sort of weaved together was absolutely brilliant and i just cannot get enough of the series right now i just absolutely love it i cannot help but just love it also i'm going to be mentioning the wayward children series specifically every heart a doorway and also down among the sticks and bones because seanan specifically is so good at finding little pieces of my brain and my life experiences and putting them into books and she does this all over the place in every single book of hers that i've read i've found a character i have related to in some way that i'm not usually used to but specifically in every heart a doorway i'm going to mention as well as Down Among the Sticks and Bones, I'm counting them as one book by the way, but this is because of Nancy and Jack. Now first of all Nancy because Nancy is an asexual character which I've never seen before in like books, film, TV, anywhere. So that was a really cool thing to see and have it on page representation. I loved that and it just worked so well for me. But also I'm going to mention Jack because in recent years as in the last year, Jack's like OCD cleanliness thing is me on every level it is me i didn't used to have a problem with this but obviously in the last year i've just ended up with contamination based ocd essentially my ocd has evolved from just patterns and routine and stuff like this into full-blown um contamination based ocd and i just found it so relatable and i just 
love these characters anyway but I love those two specifically because of how relatable they are to my own experiences I also just love how quick and easy these are and how whimsical they are I'm not usually here for whimsy but these books work really really well for me I fly through them I love each and every adventure of them I love how much they interweave with each other as well and it's just generally a fantastic series I've also got Arusha as a series as well on this list because I have genuinely loved the two books I've read so far I've admittedly got the third one and I haven't read it yet but I am very excited to but essentially I have been loving this series because this is sort of like a Percy Jackson type idea but with the Marburata and I feel like in reading this I've learned so much more about the Marburata and stuff like this that I never really knew anything about before I'd heard about it but I never really knew anything about it before so I feel like I've learned quite a lot from this book I also love all of the characters and all of like the adventures they end up going on and the quests they end up going on and stuff like this I love the pop culture references despite the fact that Aru makes me feel old when she says stuff like The Matrix is an old movie and I'm just like damn now I feel old because I grew up watching The Matrix but I do genuinely love this book and this series again it's just absolutely brilliant it really like has me flying through it and I just cannot wait to read the next one and I'm so sad the series is coming to an end this year like in April I think it is but I have loved it I have absolutely loved it and it is now a firm favourite middle grade for me I've also got to mention the obvious and that is Vicious by V.E. Schwab because obviously I am Schwab trash she is one of my favourite authors of all time I absolutely adore her and this book feels like it was written specifically for me in a weird slightly twisted way because I love morally grey characters and I love superheroes and I love it when characters are trying to kill each other and this book is essentially two morally grey people with superpowers trying to kill each other and I'm here for that I am absolutely completely and utterly here for that and this book and its sequel Vengeful were fantastic I flew through them I'm still obsessed with them I'm still slightly in love with Victor Vale I'm not gonna lie and I just genuinely love the series it's so like quick paced and so good on so many levels and it just spoke to my weird twisted Wednesday Adams heart on so many levels and it was just fantastic and I'm so excited for like the comic that's coming out called Extraordinary I'm so excited for that to come out I'm so excited for like the final book in the trilogy to come out whenever it happens to come out and I'm just loving the series I do genuinely love the series and also it's a really nice floppy paperback which is also fun to hold but it genuinely speaks to my weird twisted Wednesday Adam heart, Wednesday Adam's heart on so many levels and I just love it I absolutely love it also Victor's also asexual which is another tick for me as well I'm also going to mention Slay because I usually don't like contemporaries contemporaries aren't my thing at all unless that contemporary is some sort of like fantastical thing like legend born or something like this where it's set in modern times but there aren't magic or some sort of science fiction thing i'm generally not here for it but i really really enjoyed this one because this one is a contemporary but with a ready player one twist and i love this book so much i read it in a day i don't read books in a day i i genuinely don't read books in a day if i am reading a book in a day it's gonna have to be something short like the Spiderwick Chronicles or a comic. Other than that, I do not read books in a day. And this is a like full length novel and I read it in a day essentially and I loved it I absolutely loved it it revealed so many parts of like ignorance in my own brain it gave me so many things to research and look up more into it gave me a brand new perspective I hadn't even thought of before really or was only just starting to think of um, because of everything that's been going on in the world but I did genuinely love this one I loved all of the conflicts that came about it like all the different like the sense of community as well I felt that sense of community like shining through this book the power of friendship of this book and sisterhood and everything else I thought it was absolutely fantastic and such an important book as well seriously I do recommend this to absolutely everybody because even if you do not read contemporary or whatever I do think this is an incredibly important book to read and now weirdly all of the books I've got left that aren't comics or on my kindle are all middle grades that I read as a child but I like how that's turned out first one I have to mention though is Muddle Earth because I remember reading this as a child and specifically I remember this being read to me as a child and weirdly I never finished it as a child we got distracted by something and never finished it as a child but I finished it as an adult and thought it was still absolutely brilliant this is sort of like Discworld 
but for middle grade and I love that I love the characters the drawings in here are also absolutely stunning I don't know if you can see that can I show you that you can sort of see that but the drawings in here are absolutely stunning by Chris Riddell the storyline is brilliant by Paul Stewart and I do genuinely think this is brilliant I laughed out loud in so many places and I have so many good memories of reading this book as a child next one I've got is Nurse Matilda this is actually the Nanny McPhee cover because this was re-released when obviously the Nanny McPhee movie came out and I really enjoyed the movie so I picked up the book this is actually a bind up of the three Nurse Matilda stories and all I really remember about this is counting the children which sounds weird but because there's more children in the book and it grows with every story I ended up writing down the names of all of the children and then counting them and I think it got up to about 37 in the end or something ridiculous like that that's all I really remember about this series I am desperate to reread it but it is one of those books that sort of sticks out in my mind of books I read as a child I've also got Fire and Ice on here now this one I have absolutely no memory of what this one's about all I remember is that I was obsessed with it. I ended up reading it quite a few times as a child. That's all I remember. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, there was a private investigator. There was a private investigator and the main character had green hair. That's all I remember, but I genuinely remember absolutely loving this series and just reading it over and over and over again. And I think I'm going to have to reread it because I can't remember anything. And now I'm desperate to find out what this book was actually about because I can't remember for the life of me. A similar situation is Larklight by Philip Reeve. Now this one was set in space on a ship. And that's all I remember. Which is weird because I read this about six times as a child. I'd literally read it, finish it, and then without stopping to do anything else just start back at the beginning and read it through again. And that's all I remember. I remember loving it and that's it I can't remember anything else but I do remember loving it so I had to put it on this list because I couldn't leave it off because even though I can't remember it I do know I loved it and then I've also got the secret of platform 13 on this list because obviously I do the only problem is is that I can't remember a single thing about this book further than the fact that it's a middle grade and a fantasy but genuinely I think there's a prince I'm pretty sure there's a lost prince yeah a secret gateway to a magical island, a lost prince, a wizard, an ogre, a fae, and a hag, and that's all I remember. I should probably again reread this one to be honest because I can't remember a thing about it. All I remember about this book is reading it while sitting in the car because I found it in the door, like the door of our car. It was in one of the side pockets of the car door. That's all I remember. It's a weird memory to have, but I weirdly have that memory. And that's all I remember about this book, so this is definitely going to have to go on the reread pile. I've also got to mention The Hogfather, because I know I mentioned Good Omens earlier, but I also have to mention The Hogfather, because it's The Hogfather. This was my first ever Terry Pratchett book. It was my first ever Terry Pratchett sort of hit, essentially, because when I was about 11, Sky One adapted The Hogfather into a two-part series for that Christmas and I just remember my mum sitting me down to watch it and going it's got a skeleton in it and it's like our world but slightly odd and you're gonna love it and I absolutely fell in love with it and from that moment I fell in love with the Discworld and I haven't stopped loving the Discworld since and it just absolutely just brought this love for Terry Pratchett into my life and I've watched the adaption every single year and I've read the book multiple times now as well I just it kick-started this love of Discworld and I just love the Hogfather I'll never stop talking about the Hogfather and then the final book I've got to mention before I go into all of my various comics and stuff because obviously this list is not without comics I have to mention Failure to Communicate because this book is a sci-fi where the main character is autistic and I've never seen that in a book before, quite frankly. I still haven't seen a sci-fi or a fantasy where the main character is autistic. And if they are, they're coded that way, but they never say the word, which really annoys me, essentially. But this one, it was so, like, like on page. It's the whole way through the book. And one of the main conflicts is the fact that the main character is autistic as well. But it's done so well and 
absolutely brilliantly. I related so hard to Zandri as a character. It was the first time I'd properly related to an autistic character who hadn't been on TV. So it was absolutely fantastic to read that and it just has such a special place in my heart now because of that. Onto the comics now, starting with the obvious House of M. Because of course I had to mention House of M because I am me and I wouldn't be me unless I mentioned House of M. But essentially this is one of the first comics I ever read. This is the first event I ever read in the Marvel Universe and I loved it. I had no idea about the previous continuity. I hadn't even read Avengers Disassembled, which is the direct prequel to this, or anything like that, but I just hardcore fell in love with comics and this world immediately at reading this. And I immediately, after finished reading this, raced out to get the next one because like to finish this series because I'm just obsessed with it. I'm still obsessed with it now. I'm still collecting all of the comics I can get my hands on that are tie-ins to this because I love it so much. And I mean, the storyline is brilliant, the artwork is brilliant, the stuff it brings up in this comic as well is just truly incredible and it's, there's a reason why this is the most famous comic that Marvel's ever done, or at least one of the most famous comics. And there's a reason for it and it's truly incredible. I love it, it literally cemented my love of comics like that. I just it's amazing. I'm going to shut up now because I will be talking about this for a very long time otherwise. I've also got to mention 1602 though because this is the first ever Marvel comic I ever read. And that was about four years ago now and it's now grown into, well, all of these and a comic book website now essentially. And I've got everything to thank for this comic because it was so clever. Seriously, if you're looking for a way to get into the Marvel comics, this is the place to go because Literally all you need to have done is to watch the Marvel movies, including the Fox Universe and the Fantastic Four. That's all you need because it's all in here, essentially, and that's all you really need because everything else is explained to you and it's just fantastic, essentially. It's not set in the main world, it's set in 1602, hence why it's Marvel 1602. And like the character reveals of this, the storyline, the artwork, again, it's filled with all of my favourite characters. I mean, literally so many of my favourites in here like Doctor Strange is in here, Natasha, Peter, Nick Fury, Bruce, the Fantastic Four, Doom, the X-Men, Scarlet Witch, all of them, they're all in here and I just loved it. Next one I've got to mention is I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young. Now this one is obviously not a Marvel comic, this is a one done by Image, if I remember right, is it Image? Yeah it is. And I love this one. I have not had that much luck with comics outside of the Marvel Universe, but I Hate Fairyland works so well because it appeals to my slightly sick and twisted, again, Wednesday Adam's heart. Because this is essentially what would have happened if Deadpool had been stuck in Fairyland for 30 years and was going on a killing spree to try and get out. Essentially, it's ridiculous on every single level. And now I'm going to try and find some stuff that doesn't look too bad because there's a lot of, like, violence and blood and gore the whole way through this so I would be careful if you're like not good with gore don't read this essentially but for me it worked absolutely so well on so many levels the humour was right up my alley and everything was right up my alley I thoroughly enjoyed this book I cannot get enough of it I'm also going to mention Eve Ewing's Iron Heart because that book like that comic just worked so well for me because it's literally like about a 16 year old girl who has reverse engineered an Iron Man suit and is now going around being a superhero and not letting anybody walk all over her, not letting people talk her down, being unashamedly clever, unashamedly nerdy and I love it. It's just truly an incredible comic and I will never shut up about it because it was so good. Also I'm going to mention Champions which is where Ironheart next turns up because this one is all about Ironheart, Miss Marvel, Miles Morales, Nova and a whole load of other teenage superheroes teaming up together and being the champions and I just love it. I've only read the first one so far. Well I've read one of the volumes so far and that's it and I've saved the rest of them because I'm going to save it to read when either I'm feeling really low and I need to pick me up or when Miss Marvel comes out whichever one happens first because this series just made me so happy to read. I just felt so happy reading it. I don't know why it just I just felt really happy reading it even when they're dealing with like really deep and dark stuff and sort of dealing with like guilt and stuff like this it was just fantastic it absolutely was fantastic and I cannot get enough of it now 
genuinely cannot get enough of the champions. And then also I've got to mention Vision by Tom King. Now I read this one recently and it is fantastic. It's more of a literary comic than anything else I've ever read which is weird because I'm not used to literary type comics but this one worked so well dealing with Vision being in suburbia and how he's dealing with all of that with his robot family, synthesoid family I should say and there's so much murder in this one and just seeing how it all goes down the drain was just so dread filled and yet I couldn't stop reading. I was filled with dread reading this because I was just sitting there going what's gonna happen now, what's gonna happen now, it's all gonna go wrong and eventually obviously it did and watching it all fall to pieces was just unbelievably compelling for some reason. It was truly an incredible comic and I cannot recommend it enough because it was rather good. And then the final thing I have to mention is the A-Force because this wouldn't be a list of things like, like books and comics I loved unless I mentioned the A-Force because this is comic obviously all about the A-Force and the A-Force are essentially female Avengers and people like this, Inhumans and ga Guardians of the Galaxy and all the rest of it teaming up together and just battling as a team essentially and I loved it. I loved how like together they were as a group even when they were arguing they were still like they were still together in their own way sort of thing. I love the fact that there were no men around to try and like boss them around or take over the situation. They were fully in charge literally like the only time you see any of the male heroes they're either villains in this world or they're completely and utterly in the background to the point where they don't even have a speaking part they're just an easter egg in the background of one of the panels and that's it and while i love the male heroes obviously i love the male heroes but this was just fantastic to read just about women and i mean it inspired me wearing this t-shirt again because i do genuinely love it anyway but i do love the a force so much and i'm desperate for more of it and i will just get it wherever possible now because this series got cancelled but I do genuinely love it so much and I do think it is absolutely fantastic. And that is my top 25 books before I turn 25 video so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give me a thumbs up, comment down below with some of your favourite books I'd love to know, I'll also leave a link down below to all of my social media if you want to check it out including to the comic book sanctum which is my website dedicated to Marvel Comics and if you want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video but until next time everyone, bye!